So what next for the embattled president? BBC's North America correspondent John Sopel explains. So the next stage is that it becomes a trial in the Senate. The articles of impeachment are literally carried from the House of Representatives to the Senate. The Senate will then organise a trial where the, the head of the Supreme Court, John Roberts, he'll be sitting, presiding over this trial. And the 100 senators are the jury. And what you need to convict the president, and if you convict him, he is removed from office, that's it, presidency over, it's never happened before, you need a supermajority. You need two-thirds of the senators to vote for him to be removed from office. You need 67 senators to vote for that to happen. As we speak to each other now, with you in New Zealand and me in Washington, D.C., I would bet every Christmas present that I'm going to get that won't happen. I just cannot see when there is a Republican majority that any Republicans are going to vote against the president and vote for him to be removed from office. Maybe one or two at the highest level, but I just don't think that's going to happen. Can you put it in perspective for us, John? How significant a day is this in, in, well, political history and in America right now? Hugely significant. Massively significant. I mean, there have only been two other presidents in American history who have been impeached. You've got Bill Clinton in 1998, and before that, you have to go back another 130 years to a guy called Andrew Johnson who succeeded uh, Abraham Lincoln after the American Civil War. So there aren't a whole lot of people who are members of this exclusive club, uh, the Impeach Presidents Club. And if everything goes in the way that we anticipate it will do, Donald Trump is going to become the third member in, you know, in, a, in a pretty short amount of time. On the other hand, it has been such a partisan debate that it's sort of, I've, I have sometimes felt today that I am watching a soccer match where I know the result. You know, you, it doesn't have the same sense of drama or excitement because you know what's going to happen at the end when the referee blows the final whistle. So how would you describe the atmosphere there? How would you sum up that mood? <sighs> Toxic. Um, there's a phrase in French, un dialogue du sort. It means a dialogue of the deaf. So you've got both people talking at each other and neither side listening to one another. And that's what it has felt like today. So the Republic on the Republican side, the defenders of Donald Trump, they haven't got into the detail of any of this. They've just said, this is a witch hunt. You've been trying to get Donald Trump ever since he became president. And that's, this is all that's driving you. You, can't, you haven't got over losing the 2016 election not addressing the issues about the phone call that he had with President Zelensky of Ukraine, not addressing what the testimony has been of lifelong public servants in America. And you've got the Democrats saying, if we do not impeach on this, then what do we impeach on? And neither side has listened to the other. And I think the weakness from the Democrats' point of view is that they have pursued this impeachment process and haven't been able to peel away any significant numbers of Republicans to back it. And I think the Republican weakness is that they're going to go into this trial and we haven't heard from the chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney. We haven't heard from the former national security advisor, John Bolton. We haven't heard from um, the secretary of state, Mike Pompeo, because Donald Trump has issued a blanket ban on any of them giving evidence. And so how can you have a trial? You know, if the weakness of the Democrat case is that no one with first-hand knowledge has testified, well, then surely the answer is, get them to testify. And that is something that the Republican Party is very resistant to do, and that is the weakness on their side. John, President Trump says he's not watching this at all. He's not paying attention. It's a hoax. Are but you if, kidding me? But if we look at the Twitters, he's been up since dawn, hasn't he? <laughs> the idea that Donald Trump is not watching a show where he is the central character in it, is frankly laughable. Look, Donald Trump, you know, is at the centre of this drama, and the six-page letter he sent to uh, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, 24 hours ago, one of the most extraordinary uh, letters that you will have ever see written on presidential notepaper. Um, the tweets that have been coming out today about pray for me and, you know, the injustice of it all, I mean, you, you, you have the full range of Donald Trump emotions in it. You have indignation, outrage, hurt, self-pity, fury, incandescence. It's all there. 
it's all there in the past 24 hours. And sometimes he's, he, he leans towards self-pity. Other times he's incredibly combative and pugilistic and just wants to have a fight with you. I mean, he's about to do a rally. It's going to be a connoisseur's special, this rally, because it's a, it could be the perfect split-screen moment where the, the House of Representatives is delivering the vote on impeachment and he is going on stage. That's the BBC's North America editor, John Sopel.